and there goes the bell. Who has your money and who has your shares? And did you put your money where your mouth is? This is the trading bell. My name is O'Brien Kiman. We are coming to you from the trading floor of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And we have a program lined up for you to help you understand the market. And of course, alert you on the shares that are moving, stagnant, or even that are dropping. And of course, later on, I'll be talking to Edwin Chui. He's a senior research analyst at Diane Blair. He'll be explaining to us how the figures are performing. But for now, Dan Awendo is the managing director, Home Africa. He's joining us. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Very good. Please. Uh, yeah, so, so, Dan, um, you are in the business of providing people with shelter. You listed at the growth enterprise uh, market segment in the year 2013. Do you have any regrets? Not really. We, I think, appreciate uh, significantly the fact that we went into the, the growth enterprise market. We find that uh, we have benefited more than we have lost. And I will, uh, I will take you through some of the, I think, benefits that we have seen coming mm -hmm. through listing on the gems market that we feel, uh, you know, other people should share into as well. Mm -hmm. uh, um, when you listed the price of your shares was two of shillings. As we speak now, it's less than two shillings. What happened? First of all, I think it's important to understand that the valuation or price at the market is not necessarily a reflection of the value that sits in the balance sheet of a company. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of perception involved in how the price is determined because it's also a demand and supply uh, uh, item. Now, what, what is happening is that if you look at our balance sheet, the size of our balance sheet is much more than the one shilling 20 that uh, may be represented on the stock exchange today. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have significant land bank value. And if you value that land and reduce all the liabilities that we have, we are much, much higher than that particular uh, 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 value that has been uh, showing over the last couple of, couple of months. Mm -hmm. we, we are going through a process now of fundraising that will help us catalyze that value much more for the shareholders. Uh, we believe that uh, once, we, once we finish with the fundraising process, all the land bank will then be converted into finished property that can be sold to the market. Mm -hmm. I, I know your shareholders, they give you the go-ahead to go to the market and raise five billion shillings. Right. Have you been approved or have you approved, uh, approached the market regulator for the same? Uh, we have. Remember that uh, the market regulator only comes into play when you have questions that you have to respond to, mm. especially towards the shareholders. Now, by the time we're going to the shareholders, the regulator had already given us a green light in terms of our ability to raise that kind of, uh, that kind of money. But even through the process of fundraising, we expect to go back to the regulator to just give us uh, feedback as to the process that we are following, but also uh, enable us uh, or give us the credibility that we need to go to the shareholder market, uh, whether it's directly with our shareholders or with strategic uh, investors. Mm -hmm. So the approval process is a continuing process, uh, but at the same time, we, I think we are very much in line uh, with time as far as the planning was concerned. And mm -hmm. we expect that uh, somewhere in the middle of next year, we should complete that process. Mm -hmm. so, so, so you're targeting sometimes uh, mid next year you know, before you go to the market. And have you agreed the avenue that you are going to use to raise the funds? Yes. Uh, so far, we, we are focusing on a strategic investor. Mm -hmm. We have uh, already engaged the Pamoja uh, group, uh, Pamoja Capital, which is uh, part of the Genghis group as well. Mm -hmm. We expect that uh, based on their success or track record, that uh, we should not have too much difficulty raising the, raising the money. Uh, we believe that... Um, if we go the strategic investor route, we will not only be accessing new, new shareholders uh, to, you know, to take a significant stake, stake, uh, stake of our company, mm -hmm. but I think more importantly, bring us uh, technical capacity that we need and the financial uh, capacity that we also require. How much of your company are you selling? We, I think that the determinant will come at the end when we are now uh, negotiating with the strategic investors, but we feel that uh, it will be somewhere between th uh, 30 and 40%. 30 and 40 per cent. Yes. Uh, what do you plan to do with the money? We currently have three projects. Uh, our largest project is MIGA uh, Golf Estate, which is 774 acres. We expect to put between 1.5 and 2 billion shillings there. Mm -hmm. We have a project in Kisumu called Lakeview, 96 acres, 
we hope to put in about one and a, one and a half billion shillings there. Yeah? And in the balance, we have a project in Tiwi, uh, which is in South Coast, where we, we expect to put the balance. Now, no, those projects will not consume all that money. Um, we believe that a lot more money is required for all of those projects. Mm -hmm. But this is a seed that we're going to use as we invite other strategic investors, mm -hmm. specifically project JV partners, to come in and, and, and uh, invest with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let's talk about your flagship uh, project, that is MEGA. Yes. It is running behind schedule. Has this somehow affected uh, your, your, your business? It has to, uh, to, to an extent. Um, the delay was really occasioned by capital raising issues. Uh, we had expected, we had planned that a lot of the, uh, the financing was going to come from pre-sales. But as you may know, over the last two years, uh, sales in the real estate market have been quite dry. And so it required us to go back to the uh, planning table mm -hmm. and start looking at funds from elsewhere. So yes, it may have delayed, but we have now started the process of, uh, we are now back on site. Uh, two months ago, for example, uh, the road network is already being worked on. If you go to the site today, the front area is already cab road. We expect that project to, uh, to go on for the next 24 months. Mm -hmm. We have already fully paid for that road network uh, and is expected to uh, be delivered um, uh, within the next 24 months. We, we hope that that alone will catalyze a lot more sales mm -hmm. for our project and therefore accelerate the completion, which we hope is at the end of 2018. Mm -hmm. And of course, we also saw um, a shake-up of uh, almost 90% of the entire board uh, plus uh, the management. Has this somehow dampened the spirit of uh, investors and shareholders? Actually, it has not dampened. It has, it has uh, really highlighted the, the need uh, that we had already realized before, and that's the need for change. Uh, you, by the time we were listing, uh, there were a lot of questions by the investor market about mm. uh, whether we have the right corporate governance structure, whether we have the right management structure, whether we have the right, right business plan, business models. But I think that change, bringing in a new board, bringing in a new chairperson, bringing in new management team, has significantly increased uh, the credibility uh, value of the company. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we, as we engage with investors, we see a lot more confidence. Uh, people coming in and saying, look, <coughs> there's value in this particular company. Let's look at it in more detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's reflect back, you know, the time you were listing at the GEMS. Yes. Um, the, the paper value of your company was about almost 5 billion shillings. Right, right now, we're talking about 1.7. Mm -hmm. how, how do you face your shareholders? What do you tell them? The fact is that a uh, shareholder has lost paper value. But uh, the... The savvy shareholder, the sophisticated shareholder, <laughs> has in fact kept his shares. And even more uh, interesting, a lot of them have increased their shares because at a price of one shilling 20, we're talking about a very cheap share. And so those who can see the, um, the, the, the long-term uh, view of a, of a real estate company mm -hmm. have in fact invested more. Remember, our projects are not short-term projects. So we we can't necessarily show quarterly profits or, or even yearly profits. But if a project is a seven-year project, most of the value, most of the profit will come at the end of the project or towards the end of the project. Mm -hmm. All our projects are very young. Some have hardly started. So expectation is that as we build those projects, once we get the capital in place, a lot of that value will go back to shareholders. So the savvy investor actually bought. The savvy investor has actually kept their share. Done, because we have to come to the end of this interview. I want to find out from you. The market is somehow becoming saturated with a lot of uh, supplies. Are you worried that um, there's likely to be a glut in the market in the not so distant future? Look, um, economies across the world have ups and downs. Um, part of the reason why the, the market has been dampened of late is just the level of liquidity that, that is in the market. Mm. So whereas we are now enjoying 14% interest rate, the cr level of credit is much more reduced in the market. Uh, uh, in fact, statistics have it that uh, as credit, credit was increasing by about 20%. But since the 14% thing came in on into place, credit has shrunk by up to only 4%. So we're talking about good rates, mm -hmm. but no money in the market. Mm -hmm. So people are not doing new investments. The other thing is that when the election is coming up, most people will not take long-term views. They will not do long-term investments. So we expect that 
once the election is done and once uh, uh, the banks start getting more sophisticated in the way that they engage in the market, mm -hmm. as far as mortgage is concerned, you know, the value of property will, will, will come back. Business as a real estate uh, in, uh, developer will really uh, come back. Done. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here on The Trading Bell and, of course, sharing your knowledge with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Dan Awendo, Managing Director, Home Africa, joining us here. Remember, Home Africa was the first company to uh, list at the growth enterprise market segment. That was back in the year 2013. He's joining us here to discuss the future and the current challenges that the company is facing. You have heard it from him. This is The Trading Bell. Surprising figures of top gainers here. And we're joined by Edwin Chui. He's a senior research analyst at Dyer and Blair. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now, I'm going through the, 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 the top five gainers, and I'm surprised because uh, Nairobi Securities Exchange, just the other day, they issued a profit warning. They have featured in the top five gainers. Uh, we have East African Portland Cement, the same. What is not happening? Is, this, is there a serious uh, uh, speculative tendency here? Uh, it's actually going to be a very speculative month, I, I suspect, uh, in part because we do not really have any, anything in way of uh, company announcements or corporate actions, they're called, uh, that are likely to create market visibility uh, towards various uh, uh, sectors. And the other uh, problem we have is that uh, a lot of the major market players uh, you know, the big institutional uh, clients mm -hmm. are probably holding back now because they are either closing their books uh, or they either do not uh, see a guarantee of an appreciation before the election. Uh, so that is one of the things that has been factored in. And once you take those people out who trade on fundamentals, then you're left with uh, day traders who most likely trade uh, purely on speculation. And you're right, uh, if you look at uh, the counters listed, uh, you have, you know, counters that have been actually making a loss, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like East African Portland Cement. Uh, you have, you know, EGAD, you have uh, NSC that already uh, had a profit warning. Uh, but uh, it, it does, it can make sense to a point. You know, if you take NSC, uh, we do expect that when the market turns, they're actually going to experience a very huge appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, we also expect them to come into the market with the new products. Uh, they've been sort of prepping to bring in derivatives any time now. Uh, and that is going to be sort of another point that can actually enhance uh, the counter. So it does sort of add up uh, that people would actually speculate on NSC right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's maybe a little bit unclear why they would speculate on East African Portland Cement, especially because uh, we haven't received any guidance on how uh, the key issues are going to be addressed. Uh, but on the other hand, Transcentury, uh, we know they have had a new uh, private equity investor coming. Uh, they are now majority uh, shareholder. Mm. Uh, we know that uh, they are likely to convert or are in the process of converting uh, the remainder of the bond to some sort of a loan, which should sort of maybe uh, help them in terms of their finance cost. And so we do expect that, you know, in the medium to long term, say two to three years, the TCL is going to be actually back up. So it does make sense that uh, people would speculate on, uh, on Transcentury. And finally, I guess the one thing I can say is that um, if you're expecting a major announcement, if you're expecting Transcentury to come out at some point and say this is now the new plan we have, then you can go in now hoping to get out. I think we have seen that situation with mm -hmm. Kenya Airways when, uh, when, you know, when we had the news that uh, Michael Joseph uh, is going to be the chairman as, as chair at for but people came in and went to six bob and started getting out. It's still a very fair trading strategy, if you ask me. I, I, I want you to talk about, um, you know, the top losers. Um, my, my surprise uh, uh, security of the day is Flame Tree Group mm -hmm. Holdings. Why yes. is this happening? 
Uh, Flame Tree is one of those uh, stocks that I actually choose to call a good company, mm -hmm. but maybe a bad stock. And I see a bad stock maybe a bit lightly, uh, just because when I think about Flame Tree, well, I'm an analyst, I know what they do. But people out there, if you tell them Flame Tree, it's almost difficult to associate Flame Tree with something, maybe a product, a personality. Cosmetics. Yeah, so I know, I know they do rotor tanks, I know they do uh, beauty products, I know they do candy and biscuits and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's not uh, very visible to the investor out there. You know, if I say something like equity group holdings, everyone is going to think either mm. of James Mwangi, the person credited with its success, yeah. or Equity Bank Kenya. Mm -hmm. But equity group holdings is actually more than just the Bank of Kenya. They have, you know, a lot of other businesses they are doing. They have, you know, uh, an insurance product they have. Uh, they're in brokerage. Uh, they have uh, subsidiaries in other countries. And all those are sort of contributing to their performance. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Edwin, thank mm -hmm. you very much indeed for joining us here. You're welcome. Edwin Chui is a senior market analyst at Dyer and Blair joining us here on the Trading Bell to help us understand the market. This is the Trading Bell. <laughs>